I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. <sighs> oh, man. Okay. So the story um, starts. Oh, snap. Okay. Okay. So the story starts when I was in seventh grade. It kick started off when I was diagnosed and I got hit with mono and I got it through drinking a middle school water fountain. And I believe I put my lips on it and then the next day my spleen was enlarged bedside for God knows how many months. I recovered from it, didn't think anything of it. Little did I know that kick started off a bunch of different things. I was at a AAU tournament, went to go grab a rebound. I came down on somebody's back, felt a shock wave throughout my entire body. Two things occurred when that when that event happened called optic neuritis also found out that i was diagnosed with arthritis and the specific disease is called ankylosing spondylitis found in a lot of older folks people that are on their tail end of life and i was diagnosed with it at the age of 13. it was extremely rare and the doctors were very confused and so because of the mono, that was another autoimmune disease that kicked off. So then at that point, I just was not recovering right. I just, I didn't seem to be, it took way longer than usual for the normal person to recover from, you know, somebody falling on their back. It came to the point where I just was not getting any better. And for a while, I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk and I couldn't pick up. There's very little things that I picked up on that I just really struggled doing for a long time regular movements as a person just hurt me me and my my mom and my dad and my family we were just trying to figure out what was going on in my body and my system why am i moving this way i'm a guy to young i'm a kid we're just trying to figure it out so we went to numerous doctors ankylosing spondylitis is there's two joints in your back they're called si joints and so those there's one on each side of your back if you guys have heard of a, a arthritis flare-up those pinpoints in my body are the main source of my pain. Our arthritis flare is something that somebody with arthritis, they cannot control at all. And especially when I wasn't walking, I think it was just a, a set flare because we couldn't figure out any medication to cope with it and try to figure out. So we went to a rheumatologist. He put me on prednisone. And that was just in the meantime to figure out what kind of medication and dosage to put me on. After a couple months time, I was on prednisone. I gained an immense amount of weight. I gained like 30, 40 pounds. I don't even know, maybe 60 pounds of weight of just sheer, just like puffiness. I had a shaved head. I was just so not proud to be in my own body. Throughout my whole life, I was known as being like a slim cut, fit kid, fast metabolism. And so then to be skyrocketed into that lifestyle was absolutely awful to my mental health. My body was hurting, my body was killing me. I didn't know what was going on and why I was feeling like this all the time. I was scared for like me having to live with this for the rest of my life. I'm 13 and I have to deal with arthritis. I shouldn't have to deal with that until I'm like tail end of my life. Being with the optic neuritis, the whole summer of seventh grade was spent in my house in the dark because I any light was just it hurt so much and then I also when it shot to my eyes any light it shot through my back and my whole body and my joints from my ankles to my knees to my wrists to my SI joints my back just the whole ordeal so it was painful for that whole time we finally found a medication that helped anybody that live currently lives with arthritis or especially the type of arthritis I have. Trying to figure out the medication was, I wasn't of age, like I wasn't 18. So like insurance wise, it was just such a battle to try and figure out what we could try and get on. They put me on Resuvo, that's the medication. I'm currently on Cosentix, which is, so what I mean by medicine and medication. So this is what, uh, I keep it in the fridge. And what happens is this is a needle medication and it goes in my thigh. It's an injection in my thigh and they hold it down um, and then they just let the medicine work through my body and it just goes and it directs the two SI joints. In the beginning, it was absolutely horrendous. I used to hate needles, but now I'm at the point where I've built a tolerance for it and I understand my body and I'm honest and I have good communication with my doctors that I can go without like four or five weeks 
without having to get any medications. I was just, I was always in a hospital. I was always in a doctor's office being looked at, always in MRI, sitting in three, four hour waiting rooms, checking on x-ray results, MRIs. Mentally being in a doctor's room, it gave me a reminder like, oh, I'm sick. Like, oh, I need help. A study up in Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland called uh, NIH or the National Institute of Health. They found my case, picked it up. 13 year old kid with arthritis, boom. They picked up my case every year, every two years, sometimes every four years. Me and my mom, we go up there and they do multiple MRI tests, blood tests, just to make sure everything is okay. I would get phone calls from my friends saying, oh, why are you in Maryland? And so I would just say, oh, it's a family vacation. So there's multiple stories that I've had to put on a front with people, lie to people because I was afraid of what they thought and what they were gonna say. Oh, he has, he has arthritis? Like, oh, let's label him in a category of like, oh, he's not healthy and he's not okay. So I just, I didn't want that. So that time for all seventh grade, I was, it was spent in hospitals. I didn't go to school. I was homeschooled. I finished the end of my seventh grade, being at home. And there was a point in time where my fellow classmates, they used to question like, where's Tim? You know, I've been gone for four or five months, six months almost. I got a text, he was, you know, asking how, how I was, you know, checking up on me, it's been a while. I hit him back with, yo, I'm okay, I'm cool. I was like, appreciate you checking in on me. He was like, I wasn't expecting that response. I thought you died or like, I thought you passed away. After that text, he then goes and hits me with, I thought you got diagnosed with cancer. When he texted me that, my whole morals and my mental state was just demolished, totally demolished. It didn't help the case with how I was feeling, everything that was going on, so many moving parts in my life, age of 13, just wanting, wanting to enjoy the quality of life and just being a normal kid and, and moving the way that I want to, but I just, I couldn't because of my condition. I showed the text messages to both of my parents and my dad goes ahead and takes a drive down, talks some sense into the, the kid. That summer goes by, handle with this new lifestyle and what I have to deal with now, handling medication and listening to my body, what makes me feel good, what doesn't make me feel good, because my life has been totally flipped upside down because of this. Come eighth grade year, I'm back into the classroom. The hardness of the chair hurt so much. Neck pillow under my butt because it just, on the hard chair, my back, tailbone, and my SI joints just hurt so much. So I would just walk in the hallways with my little neck pillow. Everybody questioned me, what is going on? I used to have a, a 504 plan, like a medical plan, I have teacher accommodations. Sometimes I would just have to get up in the middle of class and just stretch because my back would be so stiff. Morning stiffness would just be so awful that you know, I just have to stay moving and, you know, they changed my schedule around so that way I had like PE first periods. My body's moving and jumping and my joints are loose after eight hours, my back being stiff. Throughout the whole time, the whole summer, I didn't touch a single basketball. Certain ways I move just hurt me. I can't go all the way like I used to before. Having to do four times the work all the way rock bottom where I was to become level with players. I have to put in even more work to rise above players on the team and on the squad. Adapting to the pounding and the running and the jumping of my joints was to the point where sometimes in practices I would just be so crippled and exhausted and tired and not a single person knew about it. I had to roll because I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want anybody to have this be an excuse or have this be a way out to not play me or have this. There's so many factors that just ran in my head where I just have to embrace it and adapt and try and, you know, do the best I can because that's that's the only thing I know. So eighth grade season comes, I start the first game. After the first game, I was benched the entire season. That totally ruined my confidence. High school time, I didn't go to the high school that I was zoned for. Went to a high school that was 30 minutes down the road. I didn't wanna be with the same kids that verbally bullied me, just doing the things that I did to keep me like comfortable in the classroom. I went to this new high school with a new slate and a new energy. Nobody knew me about my past and nobody questioned what I looked like back then so then come high school freshman year um i didn't have to sit with a neck pillow anymore got comfortable with my medicine spending out the dosages so that way my body i can do more within my days and within my weeks so that way i don't feel exhausted going into high school freshman year jv then i got hit with an injury left shoulder injury because of my condition it takes like twice it takes twice as long to recover all my joints and all my bones and everything in my system is so delicate guy sat on my shoulder and it hit the hardwood and i recovered 
recovered. I come back, I play two or three basketball games. I broke my right tibia or something with my knee and my tibia. And I was out for eight to nine months. It took so long because my, my disease and my condition. Going into ending the school year and going into the summer, I was on crutches. That took a toll on me mentally, you know, trying to recover and trying to figure out this new, what I have to deal with with my body. So then summer basketball rolls by. I was training as if like, I'm ready to go play varsity basketball. The coach wanted me to stay on JV. I dominated. Our team went like 17 and two, 20 points a game and like eight assists. I didn't miss a single game, a huge accomplishment for what I've been sinking and dealing with. So then I got pulled up to varsity, good grades. And sometimes in the classroom, like if I was having a, a bad flare up day or, or I missed like a medication, you know, it would affect my grades in the class. Like it was hard to focus in the classroom when all I'm focusing on is how the pain in my body feels. Junior year comes of high school, getting ready to play at the varsity level. I wasn't injured, but I just, I didn't get any uh, playing time. And that took a toll on me mentally. That's in the past. So junior year goes by, COVID hit, and I was in a position to make a choice of continue to eat at my body and eat at my joints and to continue every practice, every game, be absolutely crippled walking out of the gym, being exhausted, heading to bed, and again, still trying to like focus on schoolwork. I just made the healthy life decision and I said no. So I kind of, I used COVID as an excuse. I remember the vivid phone call sitting with my varsity head basketball coach. And I kind of briefly told him about my condition and what I had, and that was the main reason. And I told him that my body was hurting, my body was killing me, and I was just ready to, to just not, to not play my senior year, and especially like the role of being a potentially a starting varsity point guard. I just was, I didn't know if I was capable for it. For the first time ever, I go to school to go to school. And um, I felt mentally, I felt out of place. And trying to figure out what I wanted to do outside of school, posting YouTube videos. I used to get clowned at in my classes and um, pointed out towards the tail end of high school, a week or two before, the vaccines came out. I got hit with COVID. My autoimmune disease and because of ankylosing spondylitis, um, I'm more prone and I was really scared and really like sanitary about not getting COVID because we didn't know if it would kill me. So uh, we stayed away from it. And then towards the tail end, right before the vaccines came out, I got hit with it. I recovered from it. That That's kind of what I've been, what I haven't been telling a lot of people and what I've been covering up and coping over. It's taken a lot of me to be vulnerable and to open up. Some things that I have learned with dealing with this disease is uh, there's, there's, there's a bunch of many lessons within my story. It has made me mature so quick because me having to understand my body, what makes me feel good, what doesn't make me feel good, having to cope with this for a majority of my life so far. It's a scary thing to think about, but I don't think about it too much because I don't think that way. I think of how great I have it on top of, a lot of you guys probably knew, I have severe food allergies and I have asthma, like just forced me to live a strong lifestyle and again, to mature. There's a lot of things that wouldn't come out of this without this condition. There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be me, the person I am today. There wouldn't be any of that without me living and sitting in dark days, make smart life decisions and choices that wasn't out of me trying to fit in or me trying to impress somebody. It was out of what made Tim happy and what made his body happy. On top of the stress of what the condition brought to my body, I had to do what made me happy and I never look back. With this disease, there's so many factors that affect my life. It takes me twice as long to recover from being sore. It takes me twice as long to take, like, to bring my body back to neutral and not feeling any pain. I would have to dedicate a whole week to let my body recover. Multiple days of just sleeping because that's just, my body was just so stressed and worn out and exhausted um, just to become back to ground zero. So stressful things just don't make my body feel good as well as for anybody, but it just makes it like more stressed out. It's just the wear and tear and my mental, it just is not good. So I've always been a good guy of just staying away from stress, but with my condition, I have to do that even more because it just doesn't make my body feel good. There's certain ways that I move, doesn't feel good. And there's certain movements that I have that just 
it aches and it pains. And for the time I was 13 until now, and even me sitting here talking with you guys right now, not a day has gone by without me not feeling pain. Every single day, there has always been, not, it never skips a beat. I've always felt some type of pain. If you guys, I can pinpoint certain videos on my channel where I'm either playing basketball or if I'm sitting down talking with my friends, having a good time, I'm hurting, exhausted and dying inside because my body is just killing me. And some days are better and some days are worse. There's some days where my back just wants to give out and just totally quit on me. But you know, I push through, I do it so that way people don't give pity towards me. I love the person that I have become and I've walked with a certain confidence and a certain level with my chest out and my head up because I've known what I've lived through and what has made me the person I am. You can point the finger and blame the man up above, but I, I take it as a blessing and God has given me um, this because he's, he, I guess he thought I was a strong warrior and somebody that um, can deal with it and will continue to deal with it and continue to live in pain for years to come and trying to adapt and trying to uh, make the most of my days and try and live a fulfilling and happy, joyful life out of it. So um, I had to flip the switch and I was faced with, it could either use this as an inspiration and use this to tell a great story and something that could touch numerous hearts and touch numerous lives, or I could fold and I could sit and just have people try and feel envy for me and try and make others like feel bad for me, which I didn't want and want. And I would never feel bad for myself. All the sacrifices and all the risks that I have to take throughout this journey, people could say that they have it bad. People that don't, you know, don't have the severity that I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis with my condition, with having to watch my diet and my food from food allergies. They could say they have it bad, but you know, I even say I have an amazing, I have an amazing, amazing life to be breathing and spread this beautiful message is no price tag on it whatsoever zero price tag and this is my favorite video of all time because this is really me and a side that a lot of people need to recognize because there's i'm not the only person there's a lot of people in this world that have it really bad please let this be a reminder to everybody watching do not do not judge people are going through day to day and what they have to deal with mentally physically whether it's a family issue, you don't know. And so you can't be the one to judge them because they're trying their hardest and they're trying their best and they're not a perfect human. And none of us are, I'm not. You watching through this video is not. If you can be that person to somebody else, then be that person and uplift their life because you don't know how much that might mean to them in the long run or in the short run and how much that will affect their life. I'm Tim because I've stick to my roots and I've stayed grounded and I've accepted for what my life is. Obviously not perfect. And so I do it with a smile on my face every day and my chest out, chin up, and I try to every single day to give my best, give no excuses. It's crazy. I wanna thank my two parents allowing me to always have light on the other side of the tunnel. No matter the darkest days, they see me where I'm at now, where I'm flourishing in life, and I will continue to truthfully say, thank you, mom and dad. I wanna say thank you to all my siblings. You have no idea how much you guys mean to me. Friends that know me outside of this lens right here, I truthfully appreciate you because for all those years, you guys have taken me in, taken me under your wings and not even knowing this and me living with this or you guys appreciating and taking me for me as a person is amazing. And I, I can't thank you guys enough. All the doctors and all the people that have funneled and fine tuned all my medications and all the things that helped me become the healthy, happy Tim that I am today and having the resources um, to make this beast and to make Tim happen. <sighs> Thank you guys. I appreciate y'all. Tim Hofacker. I will see you guys in the next one.